Section 17 of The Gospel in Brief by Leo Tolstoy. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by K. Hand. A Recapitulation, Chapters 1 through 4. Chapter 1 The Son of God. Man, the Son of God, is powerless in the flesh and free in the spirit. Our Father. Jesus in his childhood called God his Father. There rose in Judea at this time a prophet named John. John preached the coming of God upon earth. He said that when men should change their lives, when they should treat one another as equals, when they should cease to injure one another, and instead of so doing, serve one another, that God would appear on earth, and his kingdom would be established on earth. Jesus, having heard this declaration, withdrew from among men and went into the wild places, to meditate upon the meaning of human life, and upon his relations to that infinite source of all being, called God. And Jesus accepted as his Father that infinite source of being whom John had called God. After passing days in the wild places without taking food, Jesus began to suffer hunger. Then he thought to himself, I am the Son of God the Almighty, I ought then to be as he is. But now I wish to eat, and no bread comes for my need. I am not then all-powerful. Then he said to himself, It is true, I cannot make for myself bread out of stones, but I can overcome the want of bread, so that, though not all-powerful in the body, I am all-powerful in the spirit, and I can quell the body, and thus I am the Son of God, not through the flesh, but through the spirit. Then he said, But if I am the Son of the Spirit, I can free myself of the body and do away with it. But to that he answered, I am born as spirit, embodied in flesh. Such is the will of my Father, and I cannot set myself against his will. But if you cannot satisfy the wants of your body, and if you are no better able to free yourself from your body, he went on to himself, you ought then to labor for the body and to enjoy all the pleasures it gives you. But to that he answered, I cannot satisfy the wants of my body any better than I can rid myself of it, but my life is all-powerful in that it is the spirit of my father, and it follows that in my body I must serve the spirit, my father, and labor for him only. In becoming convinced that man's life is only in the spirit of the father, Jesus left the wild places and began to declare his teaching to men. He said that the spirit dwelt in him, that henceforth heaven was opened, that the powers of heaven were brought to men, that for men a free and boundless life was begun, and that all men, however unfortunate in the body, may be happy. Chapter 2 Life in the Spirit Therefore man must work not for the flesh, but for the spirit, which art in heaven. The Jews, holding themselves orthodox, worshipped an external God, whom they regarded as creator and lord of the universe. According to their teaching, this external God had made an agreement with them. According to this agreement, he had promised the Jews to help them, and they had promised to worship him, and the chief condition of the alliance was the keeping of the Sabbath. But Jesus said that the Sabbath is a human institution. That man shall live in the Spirit is more important than all religious ceremonies. Like all external forms of religion, the keeping of the Sabbath includes in itself a delusion. It is impossible to do nothing on the Sabbath. Good actions must be done at any time, and if keeping the Sabbath prevents good action, then the Sabbath is an error. Another condition in this agreement with God was the avoidance of the society of infidels. As to this, Jesus said, God asks for no sacrifice to himself, but only that men should love one another. Still another condition related to the following of rules about washing and cleansing, as to which Jesus said, God demands not outside cleanliness, but only pity and love towards men. He taught that all such external ceremonies were harmful, and that the church tradition itself was an evil. The church tradition causes men to neglect the most important acts of love, as, for instance, love to father and mother. Of all external ceremonies, of all the ritual of the old law, which had for object, as was held, the purification of men, Jesus said, Know, all of you, that nothing from outside can defile a man, only what he thinks and what he does defiles him. After this, Jesus went to Jerusalem, a town considered holy, entered the temple, where the Orthodox believed that God dwelt, and there taught, It is useless to offer God sacrifices. Man is of more consequence than a temple, and the only duty is to love one's neighbor and to help him. And he taught further, Men need not worship God in any particular place, but they must worship him in spirit and in act. The spirit cannot be seen or shown. The spirit is man's consciousness of his sonship to the infinite spirit. No temple is needed. The true temple is the society of men united in love. He said, All external worship of the divine is not only false and injurious, 
as with the jews among whom it caused murder and admitted neglect of parents but harmful because one who goes through external ceremonials thinks himself made righteous and free from the need of doing what love demands he said only that man aims at good and does good who feels his own imperfection to do good deeds a man must think of himself as imperfect but external acts of worship lead men into the delusion of self-conceit all external ceremonies are unnecessary and must be thrown aside deeds of love are incompatible with ceremonial performances and it is impossible to do good in that form man is the son of god by the spirit and therefore must serve the father in the spirit chapter three the source of life the life of all men has proceeded from the spirit of the father hallowed be thy name john's disciples asked jesus what was meant by his kingdom of god he said that the kingdom of god as preached by him was also that preached by john and that therein every man however poor might be blessed and jesus said to the people john was the first who preached to men a kingdom of god which is not of the external world but is in the soul of man the orthodox went to hear john but understood nothing because they know only these fictions of their own about an external god which they preach and they are astonished when no one pays heed to them but john preached the truth of the kingdom of god within men and therefore he did more than them all he did so much that since his time the law and the prophet and all external forms of divine worship are superseded since he taught it is made clear that the kingdom of god is in the soul of man the beginning and the end of all things is in the soul of man every man in addition to his bodily life to the fact which he knows as to his conception from a bodily father through a bodily mother recognizes in himself a free spirit intelligent and independent of the body this very spirit infinite and proceeding from the infinite is the origin of all and is what we call god we know him only as we recognize him within us this spirit is the source of our life and must be ranked above everything and to him we must live by making him the foundation of our life we gain the true and infinite life the father spirit who sends this spirit into men cannot have sent him to deceive men so that while conscious of him they might come to lose him this infinite spirit being in man he must have been given to the end that men through him might have infinite life therefore the man who conceives of this spirit as his life has infinite life the man who does not so conceive has no true life men can of themselves choose life or death life in the spirit death in the flesh the life of the spirit is goodness light the life of the flesh is evil darkness to believe in the spirit means to do good deeds to disbelieve means to do evil deeds goodness is life evil is death god the creator external to us the beginning of all beginnings we do not know our conception of him can only be this that he sowed in men the spirit sowing as a sower does everywhere not discriminating all over the field and the seed falling on the good ground grows falling on the sterile ground perishes the spirit alone gives life and men are responsible for keeping or losing it to the spirit no evil exists evil is but an illusion of life there are only the two conditions of living and not living thus the world presents itself to every man and for every man there is in his soul a consciousness of the kingdom of heaven each one can by his own free will enter or not enter that kingdom to enter belief in the life of the spirit is necessary he who believes in that life of the spirit has infinite life chapter four god's kingdom therefore the will of the father is the life and welfare of all men thy kingdom come jesus pitied men because they did not know true blessedness therefore he taught them he said blessed are those who have no property no position and who do not care for these and unhappy are they who seek riches and position because such poor and oppressed people are in the father's will but the rich and acknowledged people seek only to make gain from men for this temporary life to carry out god's will one must not fear to be poor and despised but must rejoice in this while showing men what true happiness is to carry out the will of the father which gives life and welfare mankind must fulfill five commandments namely the first commandment to do no ill to any one and to so act as to rouse evil in no one because from evil comes evil the second commandment not to follow after women and not to desert the woman with whom a union has once been formed because desertion and change of wives causes all the world's dissoluteness the third commandment to take no oath of any kind because nothing can be promised since man is in the father's power and oaths when taken are for bad ends the fourth commandment 
not to fight against evil but to suffer wrong and to give even more than men would exact from us not to condemn and not to use the law because every man is himself full of errors and cannot guide others by taking revenge we only teach others to revenge the fifth commandment to make no difference between a fellow countryman and a foreigner because all men are children of one father the observance of these five commandments is necessary not to win praise from men but for oneself for one's own welfare therefore there is no propriety in praying and fasting in sight of men the father knows all that men need and there is no necessity to pray for particular things it is simply needful to seek to be in the father's will and this is the will of the father that a man shall have no anger towards any other to keep fasts is not essential for men may fast merely to win praise from men and such praise ought to be avoided it is only necessary carefully to conform to the will of god and the rest will follow of itself while caring for the body care cannot be given to the kingdom of heaven even though a man does not trouble about food and clothing he will live on the father will give life the needful thing is at this present moment to be in the will of the father the father gives to his children what they need we must desire only the power of the spirit which the father gives the five commandments mark out the road to the kingdom of heaven this narrow path alone leads to eternal life false teachers wolves in the skins of sheep always try to turn men astray from this road they must be guarded against false teachers can always be detected because they teach evil in the name of good if they teach violence and executions they are false teachers by the deeds they teach they may be known not that man does the father's will who calls on the name of god but he who does good deeds and he who fulfills these five commandments will have secure and true life of which nothing can deprive him but he who does not fulfill them will have an insecure life one soon to be taken from him leaving him nothing the teaching of jesus filled the people with admiration and joy because it offered freedom to everyone the teaching of christ was the fulfillment of john's prophecy that god's chosen one should bring light to men overcome evil and restore truth by kindness meekness and goodness but not by violence end of section 17